Welcome to Top T News, where we bring you unique and even unknown news and stories. Today's story relates to the foster care system and the tragic end that involved those in this particular incident. Before we get into this story, if you like to hear about unique and even unknown stories, be sure to like this video and please share. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson were elderly married foster parents who lived in a very small rural area, Spencer Township, outside of Toledo, Ohio. The Johnsons frequently took foster children into their homes due to the kind nature of Mrs. Johnson. Johnny Jordan Jr. was a teenager who was placed into the Johnsons home. He came from a very broken family and home environment. Johnny Jr.'s parents had seven children, including him. Johnny Jr. was the third child. Johnny Sr. was sentenced to over 40 years in prison for the abuse he committed towards his children. Johnny's mother also served time in prison and had lived a very rough life due to her unfortunate history of substance abuse issues. Social services were very aware of the problems in Johnny Jr.'s family even before Johnny Jr. was born. Because of this history of problems within the family, most of Johnny Jr.'s siblings had spent some time in and out of juvenile detention and the adult criminal justice system. Johnny Jr. was approximately 15 years old when he was placed in the home of the Johnsons. The Johnsons were initially hesitant about taking in a teenager because of their ages, but the social services caseworkers pretty much begged the Johnsons to take him into their home. The Johnsons were never told about Johnny Jr.'s background. The Johnsons did see some odd behavior in Johnny Jr., but social services simply told them that Johnny Jr. just needed a temporary home for only two to three days, and they did not provide the Johnsons with any further information. This was Johnny Jr.'s 19th foster placement in the span of five years. Johnny Jr. really liked the Johnsons and considered them to be great foster parents. He enjoyed spending time with them and even wanted them to eventually adopt him. Johnny Jr. felt comfortable with them and comfortable in their home. Johnson Jr. also had a counselor that he really liked. His grades in school substantially improved and he seemed to be really doing well overall. In late January 1996, Johnny had already resided with the Johnsons for approximately three months. Keep in mind, he was only supposed to be in the Johnsons' home for two to three days. During this time, Johnny discovered that he was going to be removed from the Johnsons' home, which made him very unhappy. Johnny also became aware of his father being arrested for abusing his siblings. This was very troubling for Johnny Jr. because he always felt the burden of taking care of and protecting his siblings. On January 29, 1996, Johnny awakened with a very bad feeling inside. He really felt he was going to do something terrible, but did not know what, nor did he have any plans on doing anything. It was just a feeling he had that day. Johnny Jr. did everything he could to try to get rid of the feeling and the bad thoughts he had. 
He wanted to go out for a walk that day to clear his mind, but it was extremely cold during that time of year. The day prior, the Johnsons noticed concerning behavior in Johnny Jr. He seemed extremely irritated as if he could easily be triggered. Johnny Jr. was also breaking their house rules, which was something he rarely did. The Johnsons, because of his behavior, called social services three times that day and requested that they remove Johnny Jr. from their home. Another foster mother, who was friends with Mrs. Johnson and also had Johnny Jr. in her home in the past, knew of the Johnsons' desire to have him removed from their home. Therefore, she contacted social services and offered to take Johnny Jr. into her home temporarily, but social services did not allow it because they told the foster mother that because she had an adopted son in her home, it would not be a good idea to have Johnny Jr. in the home with another child because of his past. This was information that social services did not disclose to the Johnsons. Johnny Jr.'s troubling thoughts and behavior continued. Johnny reached out to his counselor several times that day and told him that he felt he was going to do something bad. Johnny's counselor had a great reputation and was known to be a mentor to many children in the system. However, like many people that work for the system, Johnny's counselor was overwhelmed and even overworked in his job capacity. When it came to Johnny Jr., the counselor looked out for him countless times, even during times when he was off the clock. Johnny's counselor told him that he was going out of town for a few days and he told Johnny that he would be back in a few days and to hang in there. The counselor thought that Johnny Jr. at the most would only run away from the Johnson's home. Later that day, on January 29th, 1996, Johnny Jr.'s foster mother 62-year-old Mrs. Johnson was watching television. Mr. Johnson had left the house to go purchase a space heater because the house was extremely cold. Johnny Jr. became engrossed with a terrible thought to hit his foster mother over the head. He tried to fight the terrible thoughts and eventually walked out of the room for a long period of time. He eventually returned to the room where his foster mother was watching television and he said he had an out-of-body experience and felt as if he was watching himself from a corner in the room. Johnny continued having these terrible thoughts to attack his foster mother by hitting her in the head but another part of him was trying to convince him not to hurt his foster mother. Basically, Johnny Jr. had these uncontrollable and unexplainable thoughts going on inside of his mind. Johnny Jr.'s foster mother eventually went into the kitchen and began preparing Johnny's favorite meal. Johnny Jr. went into the kitchen on three separate occasions. In the kitchen, there was an old wood stove, and next to this wood stove was an axe. Johnny Jr. retrieved that axe, but was able to gain control of his terrible thoughts and exit the kitchen. His thoughts were telling him to use that axe to hit his foster mom in the head. Johnny Jr. proceeded to enter the kitchen another time, still holding the ax, but he exited the kitchen again. 
However, when he entered the kitchen the third time, still holding the axe, Johnny Jr. lifted the axe and hit his foster mother on top of her head from behind. Without saying a word, his foster mother turned and looked at him with a surprised look on her face and she fell to the floor. According to the coroner's report, Johnny Jr. proceeded to strike his foster mother approximately 12 additional times in her head and face area. But Johnny Jr. later admitted that he actually hit her more times. After viciously striking his foster mother with the ax, Johnny Jr. believed he could still hear her breathing, even though the coroner report later said that she probably was already dead at this point. What Johnny Jr. did next was even more horrifying. Even after attacking his foster mom with the ax, Johnny Jr retrieved kerosene, he doused her body with the kerosene, and he set her on fire. It was now dark, and Mr. Johnson was on his way back to the house. Johnny Jr. had left the house after setting his foster mother's body on fire, and while he was walking away from the home on the same road, his foster dad was driving towards the house on the very same road. They even passed one another, but Mr. Johnson did not recognize Johnny Jr. When Mr. Johnson arrived at the house and saw his wife's body on fire, he immediately called the fire department and authorities. Johnny Jr. was eventually arrested and he admitted to attacking and killing his foster mother. Johnny Jr. claimed that he had no intentions of hurting his foster mother, let alone killing her. He even said he did not like what he did to her and only put her body on fire to keep her from talking. Johnny Jr. stated that he realized something wasn't right with him because he was able to watch his foster mom, the woman he supposedly adored, suffer and die without him feeling anything at all. He also later admitted that he never knew how good the rage of committing a murder would feel. There was no evidence left at the scene that linked Johnny Jr. to the crime. Johnny Jr. was tied to the murder of Mrs. Johnson due to his full confession. He even stated, I need help. At the age of 16 years old, Johnny Jordan Jr. was found guilty on one count of aggravated murder one count of aggravated robbery and one count of aggravated arson. He was admitted to prison on October 3rd of 1996 on a 40-year to life sentence. He will not be eligible for his first parole hearing until November 2032. He will be 52 years old. Mr. Johnson died approximately 11 months after his wife was murdered. There are so many more details to this story. If you are interested in learning more, there is a book that was written. The book is titled, What Happened to Johnny Jordan? The Story of a Child Turning Violent. The author is Jennifer Toth. Check the book out. Thank you for spending time with us while we shared this story. 
If you would like to hear more stories similar to this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we upload more news and stories. Also, make sure you like and share this video. Thank you and see you next time.